We are sitting down with Pam Silver. She is a professor of systems biology at Harvard and also the chair of the Synthetic Biology Symposium here today. Thank you so much for being with us, Pam. Thank you. I'm thrilled that the Biophysics Society has integrated synthetic biology into their program and allowed me to come to Los Angeles um, from dreary cold Boston. Yes. <laughs> Thank Let's you. talk about the symposium in general. First of all, I know you're also one of the speakers. We'll talk about your specific speech in a moment, but tell us about the symposium in general. Well, let me back up and frame a little bit about the history of synthetic biology, just to put it in perspective. And this is the introduction I gave in the symposium. About over a hundred years ago, synthetic organic chemistry was the technology. This was chemists, the product of chemists working in the laboratory to do reactions that could yield useful products. And there really was a tipping point where organic chemistry, it became clear that this was ready for commercialization. And this brought us nylon and all these great materials. Now, after 50 or more years of molecular biology, we are poised to do the same thing with biology. That is, biology, a cell, is one of the best chemists there is. It is the best chemistry. We don't even know all the things a cell can make. And if we can harness that in a predictable way, do it fast, um, we will be able to revolutionize the world, essentially, both at an industrial level and a research level. So that is at the core of synthetic biology, is how do we program cells in a predictable, faster way? The principles underlying that draw from biophysics, and that is why this is such a good time for to be having this symposium at this meeting. Yeah, absolutely. Now, as one of the speakers, what uh, was your specific topic and what did you want to impart to attendees? So my long-term interest is in building biological computers, that is cells that can report on past events, count, and do something. So let me give you the example I talked about. Imagine you have a bacteria that can be ingested by an animal and pass through the animal and tell you whether that animal has been exposed to antibiotics, has inflammation, when did it happen, and do something. So I wow. talked about making a bacteria that can remember exposure, for example, to inflammation, and tell us when that happens. So that sounds very high tech. Where do you see the field going in five years? Biology offers us some of the best chemistry there is. The, the, there is an infinite number of materials, chemicals, sensors that we can engineer from biology. I think in the next five years, this will revolutionize the um, chemical industry, and you're already starting to see this happen, of programming organisms to make essentially any chemical you want. Hmm. There's some beautiful recent examples of yeast that will make opioids. Wow. This will be transformative in terms of drug development. There will also be new kinds of fuels, new kinds of additives, new kinds of food, um, uh, things that's food supplements. Um, so we see that as a big part of what will happen in the next five years. The use potentially of organisms as therapeutics for chronic diseases or in, um, in cancer will be, I think, more prevalent. And in essence, I think this is a field where your imagination is the limit, that you can, biology offers us so much and, we, and what's limiting us is our imagination. That's where we hope the field will be, is that you have an idea, you can come in and rapidly engineer cells to do it. Well, it's all very fascinating and very cutting edge. Pam Silver, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.